Hey, how's it going, man? Miscellaneous, how you doing, buddy? Uh, thanks for being here, bro. Uh, welcome, everyone, and to future everyone's uh, to uh, recipe and uh, review now on a uh, nice Wednesday evening. It is Wednesday, right? Yeah, Wednesday. So we're going to do the Kolsch. Welcome to uh, Kolsch night. We're going to discuss Kolsch and pretty much the history and, you know, like I've been doing, um, build a recipe, do a couple of reviews of the Kolsch, different types of Kolsches I found. Um, so this should be, this should be fun. I've been, excuse me, I got an itch. Been studying these all week. Um, actually, even when Bumpy did his, from then on, I've been kind of like looking at them a little more. And they're ah, there's this, the history of them, amazing. It's a very, very awesome history. Like how they, how they were, how it was born, how it was brought here to this, you know, eventually here in the United States, Canada, and all those areas. Oh shoot! Can you hear me? Oh, <laughs> well, cheers. First of all, this is a IPA. I'm just drinking a bubble stash from Hot Valley out of Eugene or the Eugene. Yeah, Eugene, Oregon. So uh, these beers, these Kolsch's are, um, are an interesting breed of beer. Let me tell you a, little, a, lot, of, a lot of history, actually. And I'll, I'll sum it up as is. I can because it's in the head, but it also needs to be read a little because there's so much. But first of all, let's do a review of one just to get a blind taste. I'm actually going to do uh, one of the ones I got from Drunken One. Um, thanks. Thanks, D1, D1 Man. Thank you. Um, it's a blonde, but it's a Style. And uh, Bumpy had pointed out, if you read on it, it says uh, it's from Carback Carback Brewing Company out of uh, Texas. There, Bruton. It's a 4.9 percent sitting IBUs. And um, first of all, I can say oh, right on, dude. Cool, cool, cool. I would say this actually, just so we uh, know what we're supposed to serve them in. They're they're supposed to be served. They were originally served in a stang, which is like a uh, like a pole. They call it. It's, it basically means pull the rod, and uh, they're just f like pipe looking glass. And you get a super head, and it's just crazy. And um, like the servers, they were called kobes, I think is how you pronounce them. And they they would carry like up eleven or twelve of these, like in a wreath around their 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 uh, tray. And uh, they would make a nick on the um, – hey, Cliff's thing. Uh, they'd make a little nick on the bottom of it every time they'd have one. And when they were done, they'd put they'd put their – they'd put it over. They'd put the thing over. They knew they were done. Servers would know they were done. And they'd uh, charge them based on how many nicks they had. So it's, uh, it's really interesting. But a sting or even uh, – like I'm serving it in a Pilsner glass tonight. It's kind of like a fluty Pilsner. Um, that I also have this Pilsner glass, which is they consider it an IPA glass. I don't think it is, but that eh, kind of, I don't know, works for me. But you don't have to drink these in these glasses, but if you want to be proper, that's how it's done. So, um, but let's go ahead and rip into this. I will have to drink that later. We're going to go with a big old fluty pilsner glass it's actually supposed to be served in, you can be served in a flute glass too which is you know, like a i don't know like ping looks like a flute um <laughs> so Arbach brewing company love street blonde is a cold style blonde ale it uh july 20th or july 28 20 is the Last day is, is what they're saying is the uh, the due date, basically. <laughs> so, in the 1960s, on Allen's Landing sat Love Street, a hot spot of music and social impact. The venue hosted electric, eclectic characters ranging from open micers to the Lizard King himself. Love Street, hell yeah, this is all to like uh, Jim Morrison shit. A place to unwind and let you refresh your soul. 
Likewise, the street is a state of mind, brewed in the Kolsch style and hopped delicately with floral German hops. This beer boasts a clean malt profile that refreshes to the core without sacrificing character. So crack one open and find your own love street. Okay, so 4.9, it's all, everything sounds within range. Um, so, yeah, let's see. It's a pretty beer. Holding out at about two fingers. I imagine the foam will go down rather quickly. Retention's not super great. I've heard in these, it is a little soapy. It's very soapy. Um, let's smell. Yeah, it's just real clean and, and crisp and fresh smelling. It's got a slight floral and a very, very slight hint of lemon, but very slight. Um, even mix, you know, with mixed with malts. It's got that nice little bready kind of sidekick there coming in. It's really nice. It's expected. You know, this is a very good smelling beer. It smells great. It kind of has uh, an adjunct like smell to it. You would even think maybe a little there. I don't think there is, but I guess there. I wouldn't want to say you'd want to add corn to it, <laughs> but it does kind of have like a maybe like a earthy hay kind of smell to it. Little floral, bright, crisp, white head, soapy retention was was not good. A fast, fast, uh, fast head went down pretty quick. It's uh, pretty effervescent inside, a medium, medium rising bubble or so. It's brilliant. I can see right through it. I can read through it. That's brilliant. So, that's uh, how you doing? Cheers. All right. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So we got us a nice little blonde style blonde. So let's go and drink this. Very subtle mouthfeel. Clean, crisp. Kind of like the nose. It's very, very, uh, these are supposed to be served 40 to 45. Some say 50 degrees. Um, but this is just nice. This is actually a perfect, perfectly blended beer. The, the malts are thick. Like they're not, it's not, it's, it's all thin. It's nah, not thin. It's all mixed. Well, it's more, well blended, well put together, well meshed together. Um, you don't want to taste too much of this or too much of that or too little of that or whatever it wants. It needs to be perfect. It's, um, it's, it's watery. It's refreshing. It's thirst quenching, a slight floral lemony slightness on the palate, on the tongue. And then, a um, a fairly, uh, fairly quick finish. Dry, dry in the finish, real nice champagne like little cider quality in this. Maybe actually a little vininess, a little wine, white grape -like activity going on in this one. This is nice, very nice. Uh, out of five hops, I would I would definitely give this a five. This is two thumbs up for a Kolsch, in my opinion. I think it's very delicious and it's sticking to the standard. So, so cool. Let's learn about Kolsch. I wish I had little pop-ups and bing bong boongs, you know, make it more exciting just hearing me talk. We'll figure that out. Um, so it was basically, let's see, let's start up here. <laughs> so we had a Kolsch is a style that originated in Cologne, Germany. In Cologne in the 17th century, the bottom fermented beer started to appear. Uh, so you started getting a lot of lagers coming out called fermented beers and they basically they became competition and it was threatening the business interests and stuff and brewers and stuff um and it and it was uh it, it, the, the council there the city council kind of had made like an oath that um that you prepare your beer as and this was in 1603 that you prepare your beer as of old from good malt good cereals good hops, well boiled, and that you pitch it with a top yeast, which is an ale yeast, um, fermented in warmer climate, by no means bottom yeast. 
And this is in a little, they had to, there was a little oath to go by and follow. Uh, by 1676, and again in 1698, the council again tried to legislate uh, against bottom fermented beer by forb forbidding its sale within the city walls. <laughs> They were so crazy about, they're very crazy and like, not crazy. Germans aren't crazy, but um, they were real crazy about like how they had, not crazy, just real stuck with how a certain thing needs to be done. Uh, I really respected the beer and how it was made. And I, I really find that fascinating. Um, by 1750, Cologne brewers were competing against bottom fermenting beers by using a hybrid, hybridized brewing process. And that's where we come in with the Kolsch. Hey, Arcade, cheers. Meow. Meow. First, <laughs> it's a hybrid brew, meaning it's, um, it's, it's kind of made, it's made as an ale at a, at a warmer temp, maybe 60 degrees, 58 to 60 is what you want to ferment it at. And then you would go into, and we'll get into that later, but the, uh, then you go into like your colder, you can even like, uh, you want to go into like maybe like almost freezing uh, climate for about a month or more uh, for the curing of it, the aging and the, the, to get the clarity and everything you're looking for. A real delicate beer. And it's actually a beer you want to drink rather quickly once you open it, um, which I should be doing. Um, they taste better cold, <laughs> Kolsch. But uh, yeah, so they started doing this. Uh, they, they they would uh, first brew their beer with top fermenting yeast, but then they'd age it in cold cellars like bottom fermented beer. Um, th this type of beer was called a Kolsch in 1918 to describe the beer that had been brewed by the Sooner the Sooner Brewer since 1906. They developed it was developed by a sim, uh, developed by the similar but cloudier variant Weeb, a uh, Vib, Vibe, uh, which is Kolsch dialect for white. And by the start of uh, World War II, Cologne had more than 40 breweries. Only two were left by the end of the war. In 1946, many of the breweries managed to reestablish themselves. In the 1940s and 50s, Kolsch still could not match the sales a bottom fermented beer. Then in the 1960s, the style began to rise popul popularity in the Cologne beer market. From 430,000 barrels in 1960 to 3.2 million barrels in 1980. So that got very popular, very popular. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's just a, that's a short history there. That's pretty much all of it though. It's just amazing how it kind of worked out to be in such a nice, good tasting beer you know what what it started from to what it is now i mean it's you know the all of us here in america or whatever we we make a kolsch style of course um but uh as long as you're going by the guidelines you can pretty much uh have a, a kolsch that tastes just like it would if it was from cologne so all right so the overall impression, let's go here first. Let's see. What do we got here? Where is, that's okay. I don't want to go to that yet. So I get this information off BJCP. Uh, they're like the beer judges, uh, the beer judge website that kind of talks about all the beers, you know, how, all the styles and stuff. And then I also got it from uh, craftbeer.com. And the information, the links are in my website. On my, it's not my website, my description. Um. But some characteristics, we can start with the overall impression. Uh, four that I noted here. and uh, The first one is clean, crisp, delicately balanced beer, usually with very subtle fruit and hop character. Subdued maltiness throughout, uh, throughout leading to a nice, well-attenuated attenuate, and refreshing finish. Um, well-attenuated, I, I would be like, how fast it goes through the, 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 the fermentation process. It's a faster cycle. So you're going to get, I, I imagine if I correct me, if I'm wrong, you're going to get a drier finish from that. Uh, if I'm wrong, please don't bad by uh, striking me with a, a lightning bolt. Um, freshness is, or makes a huge difference with this beer. 
because a delicate character can fade quickly with age. So you can't, the shelf life isn't very long on these. This should have a brilliant clarity. All right, so we got the appearance now, the very pale gold to light gold, or three to six SRMs, as craftbeer.com says. Um, very clear but authentic commercial versions are filtered to a brilliant clarity, like this one, actually. Delicate white head that may not hold long exactly. Um, I almost touched the screen with fingers because my laptop's at such screen. I better use this. Um, the aromas that you want, the low to very low malt aroma with grainy sweet character. Um, pleasant, subtle aroma from fermentation like that of apple, cherry, or pear, which I did get some cider likeness in this. It's acceptable, but not always present. A low floral, spicy, or herbal hop aroma is optional, but not out of style. Some yeast strains may give it a slight whiny or sulfury character and is optional, but not a fault. The intensity of aromatics is fairly subtle, but generally balanced, clean, and fresh. The flavors that we're looking for, a soft round palate having a delicate flavor of balance between soft yet attenuated, attenuated malt and interceptable fruity sweet from fermentation, medium low to medium bitterness, delicate dryness and slight crispness in the finish, but no harsh aftertaste. This was very smooth. Finish is short or fast. Uh, the malt tends to be grainy sweet possibly with a light, bready, or honey quality. Um, come to think of that, that actually does have kind of a honeyness to it. Hot flavor is variable and can range from low to moderately high. Most are medium low to medium intensity and have a, oh, hey. Hey, v, how's it going, man? How's it going, Sun City? Cheers, dude. Sorry, I was doing my, my thing. <laughs> All right. Good to have you, man. I'm, I'm not trying to bore people, but <laughs> if you want to if you want to learn how to make a Kolsch, here you go. <laughs> um, so slight wheat taste is rare, but not a fault. You can actually use a little wheat, but like 5%. You don't want to use too much. Just a very clean beer, basically. Mouth feels medium light to medium body. Most are medium light, though. This is a medium light probably light actually medium to medium high carbonation uh smooth and generally crisp and well attenuated so you can kind of see where this beer this beer i had here was actually that's why i get a five it freaking everything and it tasted so good <laughs> um probably i got sick this morning so i'm gonna have to i gotta relax a little i might go on uh <laughs> i might um uh, I might. We'll see. <laughs> Cheers, guys. How's it going, man? <laughs> so for, <laughs> from the <laughs> BJCP, the vital – so there was two different areas. They all had their own, like, statistics, vital, vital statistics. And it sucks because you don't ever have I, – I guess I would do my BJCP only because that's the judges telling you, hey, this is what it is. And if you were to go in a competition and put one of these in there, that's what they would look for. So the uh, IBUs, they say, are 18 to 30 IBUs. SRM and color would be the 3.5 to 5, which is like be like this color. Um, blonde, hay, yellow, gold. OG, the original gravity, 1.044, 1044 to a 1050. Final gravity should be 1007 to 1011. And the ABV should be 4.4 to 5.2. From craft beer, uh, I don't know the OG or FG on these, but IBUs, they say, are 18 to 20, where BJCP is 18 to 30. SRM is 3 to 6. So they kind of opened it a little more. 4.8 to 5.3. They're going a little higher on the lower ABV of this range. So anyway from craftbeer.com the ingredients should consist of hops which is a uh, german noble hops is what you should use although you can use american versions of german hops as well uh malt the malt you want to use uh, pilsner in vienna is okay to use uh you don't really want to use anything more than that you just basically keep it simple and just use your pilsner malt um I, that basically probably what i would do maybe a little vienna uh would be good Water varies, and the yeast is an ale yeast. They have their own Kolsch yeast, so we'll get into that. 
Um, let me catch up with everyone. Sorry. You're a bit shwilly. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, good. Stay that way. <laughs> All right. So some, <laughs> some commercial examples would be or ornery beer company, and it's called the light of cologne. That sounds cool. Left hand brewing company out of Colorado. Uh, there, uh, they have the traveling light Kolsch and Alaskan brewing company has one called the summer ale. And of course the ones I have here, uh, food pairings, we brought worst nutty cheeses, which I did a nutty one last night and I got sick as all fuck from that. So, um, that's what the cheese did to me, man. I swear to God, that mold. I think I had an adverse reaction to it. Uh, light, Apricot cake sounds really good with these. Oh, my God. Uh, glassware serving temps, 40 to 45 degrees is what we say. Um, so traditionally in a stang, a straight-sided pipe like glass or in a flute glass is fine. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to pound this and get on your guys' level of schwilly. Hold on. I got another one to go through. <laughs> I couldn't take it down, man. <sighs> okay, let's do it, and then we'll get into a menu real quick, or a menu recipe. I have three beers. I'll do one at the end, too. I got a really good one I want to do at the end. One I did on Bumpies, and I forgot what I had read it. I'd have to look back at the live, but oh man, that's not fun. Oh boy. Okay. So this is Kolsch, German style ale. Uh Occidental, of course I take German style ale. It's a cologne Germany ale. It's cologne. It's cologne based. Uh Occidental Brewing Company out of Portland, Oregon. Uh, as I drop it on my head, 219, 2020. So it's three months or so. I don't know. It's been a 16. Let's get started. So just based on what we, I just read to you guys, um, Fast rising bubble, indeed. One and a quarter fingers. Slight fruit, slight earthy fruit, floral, my little bready malts. All kind of nice and blended. This is a little more punctual, a little more, you know, more stuff going in there. <laughs> hey, Jerisky, man, right on, man. You bow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dude. Oh, my camera calls. Oh, no. Oh, no. We got a fast rising bubble. It's very effervescent inside. It's a golden color. This one is a little more like of a slight, very slight haze, but it's definitely got a clear or even um, pushing a brilliant clarity. Um, nothing in there. Very clean, very. Very well, uh, just good and filtered, nice looking. Looks like a good beer. Let's drink. Golden color. I didn't mention that. Stingy on the tongue. Like my high carbonation there. This one's more bready. I uh, kind of a more bready feel and uh, taste than the other one. Uh, it's actually. It's mixed well. It seems like it's a little overpowering, though. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to get – because there's some floral. There's some herbal spicy. There's uh, a lot of the characters you get out of the German hops. Um, it seems like it's mixed well. It's just a very punchy, very punchy Pilsner-like malt taste. That bready uh, really packs in there. Um, Patch of heaven. Cheers. All right. Thanks for being here, man. Cheers, man. <laughs> I'm okay. All right. Thank you, miscellaneous. So we got some good lacing going on here, too. Uh, the uh, 
the head retention wasn't good, and that's that's what it read too. That's common with style. It's definitely at about 45 degrees, maybe 50. Smooth, clean, crisp. There's quenching. Bitter in the back, kind of dries off quick. Very nice. Out of five hops, I would probably give this about 4.75 hops. Not quite five. I think I even said that on Bumpy's thing. Maybe four and a half, four, seven, seven, seven five or something. But I'm going to build a beer. Let's build a beer. Okay. So, hold on one second. Open up the Beer Smith. I love this program. It's really awesome. Uh, if you want to build a good recipe, or it's a good supporter. It helps you. You can build your, as long as you understand a style, you really can build it without Beer Smith. But it does all the calculations, it takes a lot of the takes away. And I like that personally. So, and then he takes all, I've listened to his podcast. And he's, he's taken a lot of time to put this all together. Every year he has to update it. Every year new things come out. Every year different stuff. Let's go ahead and share my screen. I think I'm already big. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of be in my own world right now. Um, I might pop. I'm going to pop in and uh, say hello and see how everyone's doing. Um so I, all you can do is obviously hear me and see the screen. So let's go ahead and add this recipe. Let's put a name on it. Mr. Kolsch, Mr. Beerman. Yeah, go to this. Fifteen. Um... Although it's not 15 gallons, it's 10. And I need to make that 10 down here. We're going to switch this down here to Kolsch, which you can see how all this stuff he has to update every year. It was crazy. His uh, his uh, podcast is awesome. I went way too far. There, see that? Kolsch, a clean, crisp, delicately balanced beer, usually with the blah, 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 blah. So it's a pale bitter. European pale bitter is what they call it here but let's go ahead and click on that we're also gonna um i'm not gonna do corn sugar i'm gonna do forced carb uh it's single infusions and so single infusion is definitely where you want to go with this but you do want to do a 90 minute boil uh and what you want to do is basically uh boil it down for 30 minutes right you don't put any additions of hops in and at once that 60 minute time happens basically it takes away any of the um, the DMS, all the like the the cooked corn or cooked veggie kind of uh, flavors in there. You don't really want. It. It's kind of an off flavor. Uh, a little bit is o somewhat okay, but n not really what you would want. Um, so some some agree with that, but some don't. Some don't care. Maybe just do a sixty minute. But I would say do a ninety. Um, Bumpy did say he'd rather do a ninety on his too. Um, or something like that, and uh, it got different flavors out of it because he didn't do that. So I, I agree. I think a 90-minute boil, and then at 60 minutes, you want to put in your um, your your uh, one single you know, hops. At 20, 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you can put in like half ounce beer or something like that. It's a very small pinch just for aromatics and flavor, but that's entirely up to you. It's not really like suggested, but – it's, this is a very simple beer. The main part of this beer is in the fermentation, the yeast, and the and the and the uh, and the and the and the conditioning. You want that to be your most important part. So when you boil it and you cool down, you want to get that cooled down as fast as you can into your fermentation bucket at six fifty eight to sixty degrees, and do your and, you know pitch the yeast, put it in there, and get it done. Ten to fourteen days later, you throw it into a, a um, uh, a very cold refrigerator, let's say, uh, for about a month or even more if you have to, and you lager it. So it's it's a hybrid beer. So let me check with you guys real quick. All right, cool. So we got a Kolsch. We can go uh, 1044 to 1050. We can go 18 to 30 IBUs. That, see, and this beer smith gives me different than what I was reading on, on Vital Statistics. 
The color on here is three and a half to five. That was about what it was, 4.4 to 2.2, which is completely – I had like a five – what was this one? I guess that's about right. So, all right. Let's add the fermentables. We're going to get some Pilsner in there. Um, German Pilsner. We'll add – 19 pounds. I'm already over. So let's add, look, we're just going to add, this is, like I said, easy ass, easy. So let's add, I'm going to actually add some, um, I'm going to get a little more, what was the name of that fucking shit? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to add this one. Because they said it added, I'm going to see if it works. But we're only going to add 5%. I don't want to add much. So, see, that's too much. 4.9, I'm good with that. A 4.9 or even a, eh, we'll go, yeah, 4.9. Uh, 3.8 on the SRMs, perf, that sounds good to me. Not it's within range, it's even like under in the bottom of the range. Our bitterness hops, we're gonna add um ah. let's see tetanger what's tetanger? You want to add your German varieties, uh saws you can even add. If you want it, I guess. I mean, it's Strickelbracht uh, is the other one, I think. Let's see. What were they saying? The German Noble. See, this guy adds um, – oh, Herbrucker, sorry. Tetanang, Spalt, Herbrucker, Holitau. It's Herbrucker. What's that? Hersbrucker. That's really low on the that's that would be what I'd want to add at like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, maybe, if I even wanted to go that route. But we're gonna go simple. We're gonna go simple. We're gonna go Tatnanger. You hover over you. This this program is awesome. You hover over it, you can see all the info that you want, and it's even over. I just love it, man. Where's Tatnanger? Fuck. Four and a half. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll add uh, it's ten gallons. I'll do ten two two ounces at sixty minutes in pellet. Our range can be our BUGU can, uh, should be at point five three point four to point six is actually a, the range, but. Um, craftbeer.com says point or the, the chart I go to says 0.53 for the bitterness unit, gravity unit ratio. So where are we at right now? We're at, and see, this is where my cursor is 0.359. So we can even go a little more. Um, fuck, I could add a lot, huh? Well, cause it's a lower, uh, acid. Three ounces of tetanang at 60 minutes. Sounds like a lot, but it's only 4.5. You're not going to get 4.5. Every hop you get always has a different alpha acid. So it's always within a certain range because it's the same plant and bud and flower, but other people di uh, grow them differently. So very cheap beer so far, 26.68. We're going to stick with that we're in we're in range of the I, I viewed you that i like uh, miscellaneous i or my miscellaneous magnets i mean uh, mis miscellaneous stuff to add would be uh, irish moss definitely to help with the clarity and i'll probably put like uh one teaspoon in for 10 uh, 10 gallons of course i'm probably uh, i'll be lagering it as well so it'll be basically Lagered, or even like if you want to call it like cold crashed or um, 
you know, just to bring out the clarity more, to bring down all the proteins and anything that is left beside that makes it hazy or anything. It has to be a real clear, brilliant looking beer. Um, so we got, we got our base, we've got our hops. Now we need the yeast. So the yeast, um, this guy from BYO, and I really like his articles. I like, I believe him when he talks about beers. It sounds like he has a good idea of what to do um, and what he uses. Um, so this guy, the best ones he says is White Labs WLPO29 German Oil Kolsch Yeast or the Y Yeast 2560 Kolsch Yeast. I like the Y Yeast. Let's get that Kolsch. I like that. What is Kolsch? German Kolsch. That's the Y. What's the one that 2565 Y yeast? Fuck all this. I'll just do the White Labs one, WPO29. And that's the one they said is good too. So let's stick with that. It's a good one. I like it. It's a little vial. You shake it up. You leave it out for a little while to warm it a bit and kind of activate it. You throw it right in. They work great. I think they're about five bucks, five five to seven bucks a vial. Um, they look big, kind of big vials, but cool. Let's do this. Uh, we'll go. It, the heat says he likes to add two and a half packages, um, but that seems a little extraordinary. I'll stick with two for now, and we'll do it trial and error and see kind of where we go with that. Um, I think this is about it. I mean. Other than like making your water profile the way you want it, maybe you want to go find a cologne water profile, which you can look up. Um, they have them online. You can find it out and you just change it. You filter your water and then you reintroduce um, new things to, to change that water profile. So cool, man. We got, we got a 5% freaking Kolsch here, man. A German style Kolsch uh, with uh, on the uh, 50. So let's change the. Um, this 46 to 50 and our, our efficiency is actually over 72.7 percent 72 percent so and it's all based on my equipment and everything else so um yeah so that's good that's good i'm good with that that was fast cool i told you it'd be easy <laughs> a lot to a lot to go over right BYO.com, though, is great, a very great place to go. Just look up Kolsch Beer, BYO.com, and you'll see his whole lengthy article on how he brews his beer. And it actually, I mean, he says, keep a close eye on fermentation temperatures. You want to keep, this is a note that he said, uh, well, he says the yeast provide, these, oh, let's, hold on, let me start over. Um Okay, hold on. So a note, keep a close eye on fermentation temperatures, 58 to 62 degrees Fahrenheit or 14 to 17 degrees Celsius. Pitch the proper amount of yeast. Also, cold yeast do not flocculate easily or basically start to stop eating the sugars easily. It can take, um, they start to get full and they fall to the bottom and it doesn't happen that easily. Uh, it can take quite a bit of time. Uh, finings, Irish moss, etc., cetera, filtering to clear the beer. Uh, it can take, let me start over. It can take quite a bit of time, finings, or filtering to clear the beer. The easiest way to clear the beer is to lager it near freezing for a month or more. Um, you dough in at 149 degrees or 65 degrees Celsius until the enzymatic conversion is complete. You can taste it for sweetness, as Brian suggested. Um, and once you get used to it, you kind of know when the conversion happened uh, from starches to sugars. Or you can use iodine. Usually when you're <laughs> when you use iodine, you don't want it to look black. It's definitely not converted. It wants to you want to have a light brown, even like a yellowish color, and you know it's fully converted. Um, also taste it to make sure um, to make sure you're you're getting a sweet malt there. Even a dull uh, okay, hold on. Raise the temperature of the mash to 160 degree 68 degrees or 76 degrees Celsius, sparge slowly, fly sparge is what I use, 
uh, with 170 degree Fahrenheit water until you get your targeted volume. The total wart boil should be 90 minutes. This is what this guy uses, not what I or anyone else uses, to help reduce any DMS levels, cook corn, veggie off flavors. Chill the wort rapidly. The the you know the the wort would be the the beer basically rapidly to those to those that don't know rapidly to sixty degrees. You want to chill it rapidly to sixty degrees, sixteen degrees Celsius. Let the break material settle and wrap to the fermenter, aerating thoroughly. Use two. This guy uses two and a half uh, packages of liquid yeast or packages, or 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 you can make a starter with fewer packages. Uh, ferment, at, ferment at 60 degrees, 16 degrees Celsius. Lager for at least four weeks. Uh, we just went over that before bottling or serving. When finished, carbonate the beer to approximately 2.5 volumes and serve at 50 degrees. That's what he says, but I've seen 40 to 45 degrees. Um, but otherwise, you know, other websites said that's what I, my notes. Anyway, um, kind of interesting, kind of cool. Um, it's more complex towards the end of your, of your, production. Um, of course, you want to get the conversion, but your yeast is important and your conditioning is very important. So, And it also really matters how you serve this beer to someone too, keeping those temperatures right. So cool, man. I'm going to talk for a bit, drink these. I'm going to do one more, one more of these. And then um, uh, I know Beer Chugs, he's... Uh, I'm, and head over there. We'll, we'll see if I can get one run out of that or something. If it's not crowded, I'll hang out in the chat and support for sure. Beer charge is great. Check them out. Uh, so I'll definitely go over there after this. But I'm not done yet. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna drink this down. We'll, we'll chat a little bit if you're around. If you guys want to talk, and uh, we'll. Um, I'm gonna do one more review. So fun stuff, man. So like I said before, ooh, chalky. I did get a chalky before on this. I remember that. My brewery is actually – I don't want to say it again. It's coming soon, though. Um, I don't know how long I've said that, but it's coming very soon. And I will be doing my uh, brew sessions. I'm going to start them early in the day, and it will probably end up ending at this time you know, or five o'clock or so, four o'clock. It just depends on how long it takes. But once I start getting on that, I'll do a live all day long and we'll break away, probably go to beer chugs or something after that, you know, or uh, figure out what's going on, the party and the part, see what the party scene's all about here on YouTube. But um, it'll only be a brew day and I can't wait. Two beers here and I don't want to waste them. That one became garbage. I don't want it anymore. It's warm as all fuck. Right. Exactly. And I'm so gripping right now. I'm going to very soon. <laughs> I can feel it. <sighs> yeah. Woo. Okay. The reason I'm doing three this time is because I ended up buying another one. So I was like, I can't do it. But, um, because Gigantic is awesome. Dirty glass. <coughs> I told. Ew. Little uh, throw up on that one, dude. Ew, I shouldn't have had, <laughs> I shouldn't have had egg rolls before this. <laughs> Sorry about that. Damn. Hey, honey, can I get a kiss? Um. So this, I'm not going to drink all. This will go into, uh, if I make it to beer chugs, this will go into that sesh. If not, I'll... Uh, Get you know while I'm chatting, but um, so it's a bigger bottle. Giant Brewing Company's awesome out of Portland, Oregon. Some of you may have heard of them. I know I think Rod's heard of them. I think he's had a few. 
uh, Colt out of the where he's at in the, the Cleveland area or whatever. Uh, Colt's Chastic. I've had this before, but I can't remember what it tastes like. Just remember it was very good. Beer number 54. As LAB should would say, done like a true bossa nova. <laughs> Hell yeah. So 5.2%. So it's at the top range. The top range. Let's send it out Chicago. One pint point nine fluid ounces. 500 milliliters, 16.9 fluid ounces it is a Kolschtastic. Sometimes you simply want a beer that ju is just delicious, one that's crisp and flavorful, a subtle balance of malt and hops, a traditional beer. You don't just want a Kolsch. You want a beer that's Kolschtastic. That's what it's all about. Let's drink this up. Browns, huh? Okay, I'll try and find one. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Ooh, shit. There was some water vapors out of the top of that fucker. This looks nice. Oh, I need to hurry. This looks nice. So brilliant clarity. Very, very much so. One finger head. Nice, that soapy head. I like that. Mm, this is more herbal and spicy, more floral. Um, you get a slight bready, but it really has that the the hops almost like they put a late addition in this. Mm, it's got even kind of a chalkboard smell to it. Uh, we'll see about that. Um, nice uh, lacing starting. Sunfish. Cheers, man. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Um, head retention bad, like 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 they should be. Soapy head white. Um, it's a very medium rising bubble, not as effervescent. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just downed a beer. Hopefully the hopefully the um, a girl doesn't come up with it this time. Um, yeah, so not as aggressive with the carbonation. That's let's taste it. It's a gold color. It looks it looks like a gold brick. <clears throat> A very accelerated carbonation at first, and then it thins out and smooths out. You get a little bit tangy floral, um, like an herbal, kind of an herbal chalkiness. Like in the smell, I got chalkboard. It's almost like I have, and it could be because I'm used to these other beers. So hold on. Mouthfeel is um, light, so light, light, light body. Mouthfeel is, is, is kind of crisp and clean. Very nice. Uh, there's a question. Dry finish. Yeah. Hell yeah. Cheers for choice now. Okay, out of five hops, I'm going to give this. 4.25 hops. I'm not as happy about this one. Gigantic usually makes pretty good beer, but it still passes. Would I buy it again? Yeah, buy it again. I bought it again. So, um, my phone took it over the top. <laughs> That's funny, miscellaneous. Well, shit, guys. Um, we had a good night, I think. Uh, learned a little bit about the Kolsch. And, um, the Kolsch from Cologne, Germany. So go check them out. Go check out a Kolsch today and see what it's all about. Well, tomorrow or so. It's nighttime for a lot of y'all. Hi, I'm Tyrone, and I'm here to drink your beer, Homer Simpson style. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, Sunfish, you just got here, and I'm, I'm, I'm about to close off, and I, I just appreciate you being here, man. Uh, you're awesome, dude. Miscellaneous, uh, good day. thank you so much. Ron was here. Damn. What's up, Ron? Shoot. Well, I'm glad you stopped on by. Miscellaneous Magnus, Patch of Heaven, Drewski, Brewski, Arcade Arcade, Meow, and we had Sun City here. Thank you, guys. Dang, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, love y'all, man. Love my community. Love, love it. 
man, it's great. Love drinking beer even more <laughs> and smoking weed. Um, but you guys, man, take it easy, bro. Say hi to your fish for me, Sunfish. And I'll say hi to mine for you. Um, beautiful little fantail. I swear, I swear to God, things getting big. But uh, bigger, little, big old chunky fat sun, uh, goldfish. But anyway, uh, you guys take care. Much love. And, of course, cheer, 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 cheers. Meow. Yeah. <laughs>